Okay, I can't hear you. If you want me to hear you, I can't hear you. There you go. Okay. I can hear you. Your hair is so cute. Thank you. I have to chop it off. Got a yeah, I, I was going to say, it looks different. Yeah, I'm having a little postpartum hair loss. So it was time to cut it off. And <laughs> have you, um, have you tried Beachbody's collagen yet? Yes. So okay. I told Shannon that um, I've been doing that since I had the baby. Okay. Um, but I stopped taking my prenatal vitamin like the second I had him. Mm -hmm. And so I think I'm going to start taking that again. Yeah. Um, but Shannon's so good. Like she has, she, you know, she's got all these different like vitamins and supplements that she's that she does so yeah, um, she does do a lot well the reason I asked that is because I've been taking it and I noticed a difference in my hair and my skin but Ashley Burbank who is on our team she had a baby uh, I don't know like 15 16 months ago same time Shannon did I think and um she swears that the collagen helped her with the hair loss or the hair regrowth maybe yeah. I don't know yeah uh, it's definitely helped I think with my like, cause I had a C-section, I, mm -hmm. I feel like it's helped kind of bounce back just a little yeah. bit yeah. from that. Um, I'm... but my girl, I didn't have the hair loss. I mean, my hair grew crazy when I had her and yeah. with him, it's like, Oh gosh, so mine, mine fell out. I looked in the shower and I was like, gross, like that's <laughs> gross. it just fell out. But anyway, yeah, yeah you'll find it. You'll figure it out. Um, Hey Shannon. Hey. I was trying to catch up with what y'all were talking about, but it, I quickly gathered the oh. postpartum hair loss. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So let's get this started. Um, first of all, tonight, Suzanne, you good? I didn't really talk to you. Good to see you. Um, I, uh, we're talking about inviting and we're not just going to talk like what to say and who to invite. Yes, we're going to talk about that, but we're really going to go through like, can you try my silent please? Uh, we're really going to go through like the whole like, hey, Julie, like conversation, how to like talk to people, build a relationship, kind of interview them when you do get to the process. But first, I want to kind of give you guys just a little encouragement, a little pep talk, a little honestly, um, truth and love, because I was messaging one of our leader pods. I pulled out this book again and it's called, excuse my language, but it's called Get Over Your Damn Self. And it's a book. I don't know. I think she's a lawyer too. I can't remember, but written by this really hardcore corporate woman who started her own network marketing business. And she just speaks so much truth. And I was reading through it and I just really, it took me back to when I was a new coach, like to when I was in your shoes um, and I was just getting started and I had two small boys, like they were smaller than yours, Lindsay. And I was working a full-time job. They were in daycare. I would get, I drove two hours every day to get to this full-time job then I scooped up my kids and then I had to like get them ready and bathe them and feed them and feed my husband and I was teaching like two or three extra college level courses just just to make ends meet that was not that was not getting it done we were still in debt we still had you know um tonsil surgery bills and all these things that we couldn't we couldn't like just we couldn't make it all match up right and so I was hustling 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 and then I was like I was looking back and I was thinking oh my gosh and then I added coaching into that like what what in the world was I thinking like what was I thinking um and I remember I remember that my coach would just continually tell me, why are you doing this? Like, where, where is this going to get you? Like, what is, you know, adding this to your plate right now in this, in, in your life? Um, you know, when you probably are doing all the things and you're going to have to give up something to do this, like, why are you doing it? And I really, back then I couldn't see what God was going to do, but I knew that if I sold one challenge pack, that was $50, right? I knew that if I sold three challenge packs, which was my goal every single month, that was $150. And back then, you guys, $150 was a lot of money to my family. Um, that paid for grocery bills when maybe I didn't know where it was going to come from. And so, you know, like I was not casting this huge vision 
for, for making tens of thousands of dollars every month, I wanted a hundred dollars a month. And I knew that if I stayed up an extra 30 minutes, or if I got up an extra 30 minutes earlier, or if I, you know, took my lunch break to, to send three messages instead of scrolling on social media, right. Um, then that was going to get me closer to that $100 or that $150. That was something that was going to motivate me to not just like print out all the fancy trackers and put them in a binder and, and, you know, like get on the coach calls, but it was actually going to make me take action. It was make, going to make me post on social media. It was going to make me get into the inboxes. Bo, you're killing me. You're cute. Um, it was going to make me actually do the things that I needed to do in order to grow the business. And so as you're sitting here tonight, I know a lot of you guys are in the same boat that I was. You're working a full-time job. You have children. You probably have bills. You probably have big dreams and visions for your life and your family, and you just don't know how you are going to get there. Well, I'm telling you, you take it one bite at a time, and it does. Inviting has to be a part of one of those bites that you take every single day in your business, right? And I am not a huge believer that you, you're you just working for money. I think money's important, but I think that your why can be about what is this money going to do for you? And so like right now, as we talk tonight and you listen to me and Shannon, and we teach you guys how to do this, like I want you to think, how is getting uncomfortable going to change my family's future? How is it going to change my future? Um, and I just, I go all the way back and I'm so freaking glad that I did the things that I didn't think I could do. And so I hope you hear that tonight. And as you listen, and as we talk about inviting and things like that, um, just think about what's going to motivate me to do this tonight after I get off this call. And then again, tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. Right. Um, so that's my little like encouragement for you guys. And so and you're here on this call. I'm speaking, preaching to the choir, as they say, like you're here ready to learn. And I love that. And I, I know it's going to pay off. So um, we're going to get into inviting tonight. Um, so at this point in your business, you should be committed to a workout program, right? Um, everybody type in the chat bar. Were you type in the chat bar what workout program you're doing right now? Um, you should be drinking Shakeology every single day and you should be posting on social media, um, you know, posting what you're um, posting in your stories every day, just showing clips of your workout. Doesn't have to be fancy. Doesn't have to be like super, super cool yet. Just be showing up, right? Um, you know, there's a lot of coaches that I know and follow that are crushing it in this business and they don't have perfect filters. They don't have perfect stories. They're just getting on there, sharing their story, right? Talking about what they're doing and inviting other people to do that with them. So you should be consistently doing those things right now and every day. And you don't stop. You never see me stop. Do I take Sundays off? Yes. I don't work as much on Saturday as I do on Monday through Friday. Yes. Um, if it's Christmas time or whatever, or I'm on a date with my husband or whatever, I ask people to step in for me and work where I don't have to work. Yes. But 90% of the time I am showing up consistently and not making, letting this job control me, I control it. And you control your job too, right? Your business, all right? So remember that. But consistency is key. Um, now it is time to not only be posting about what you're doing, but actually inviting people to do it with you, all right? And this is not as scary as it sounds. I know it overwhelms you, I know it intimidates you, but if you think about the end goal of, of signing three people up every month and helping people get started on their own fitness journey and earning that $150 this month, it's worth it, all right? So um, nobody's going to join us if one, they don't see us doing it and two, we're not inviting them. Okay. So, you know, um, we'll talk more about this and we'll share some examples in our launch pad, but you know, you, it's time to start inviting in your stories. Um, I posted a story series, I think yesterday, that's like a Canva template. You can go in there, make a copy of it, um, edit it and change it and make it your own. Right. Or you can just get in there and talk about your workout program, show people your challenge group and say, hey, I'm a new coach and I have a goal of helping three people do this with me this month. Um, do you have some health and fitness goals you're working on? Right. Um, but and yes, those are the outside ways that we're going to invite people. But like I challenged Lindsay Duncan this week to make a list of 30 people. 
30 people that she knows, um, people that you, you work with, that your kids go to school with, um, that you go to church with, the lady that cuts your hair, your dentist, hygienist, um, you know, the people in the cubicle next to you, your neighbors. I mean, like you can come up with a list of 30 to 50 people real, real easy. Lindsay did it in like 20 seconds. I was in awe. Never had a coach do it that fast. Um, and so you're just going to start inviting them. And that's your warm market. Those are people that you can already talk to about what you're doing. People you went to college with. Go to your college alumni page on Facebook. Get in there and start connecting with old friends again, right? Um, and you're just going to tell people, hey, I'm doing this thing. Like I'm doing this thing where I'm working out at home. I'm doing it with a bunch of other women who want to be fit, who want to honor God with their bodies. We're, we're meal planning. Um, drinking this shake. I've never said I would drink, but it's awesome. And I, I just want to help other people find what I have found, which is freedom in my fitness, freedom to work out from home, freedom to, to really learn what God wants me to do with my body, right? That's my mission. Do, does that sound like something you want to do? Um, and so then you just start talking to people about what you're doing. So, okay. So I'm kind of getting off my, my little track here, but I'm going to share my slides with you guys. Um, and so I want you guys to, to ask me questions as I go along, Shannon, you jump in where and when you can jump in, um, to add to this. Cause Shannon's kind of like a beast at, at inviting to, um, I don't think I've ever had to like really teach her anything. She's just really good at it. Um, <laughs> but it is learnable. Like I didn't, I did have to be taught how to invite people. I had to be taught how to have conversations with people. I had to be taught how to slow down and not word vomit all over people, right? And give them all the information and they went running and screaming and hiding from me. That totally happened to me as a brand new coach, all right? I promise. But I love these three words and I think I got those words from build to last, but I really teach my team and you guys to run your business with faith, with enthusiasm and with action. Um, if you don't believe that you're supposed to be here, then you're not going to do it. If you don't believe in what you're offering and asking people to do, then you're probably not doing it yourself, right? But if you're committed to that workout program, you're following the nutrition plans, you're getting results, then you're going to be excited to tell other people about it, right? Um, and then enthusiasm, that's just being excited. Nobody wants to join somebody who looks like they're miserable when they're working out or looks like they're miserable whenever they're talking on their stories. Get excited about what you're doing. Even if, if it's not your personality that's okay but just show some enthusiasm for for what you're doing and when you talk to people in your conversations and daily be taking this action daily be inviting because it is one of those income producing activities all right um and we're going to get deeper into this next week on social media um but you know i did talk about the fact that you do have to be posting. If you're not posting, honestly, the doors of your business are closed. It's like, think about it. If you had a bricks and mortar business and you're like, oh, I'm opening a coffee shop, but I never actually open my door or tell people I'm open, then nobody's going to come buy anything, right? So it's the same way with this business. It's just a social media storefront. Um, and if your social media is not active, if you're not posting, if you're not in your stories, then you don't have a business, just plain and simple, right? Um, so we'll talk more about branding. We'll talk more about your IG bio feed, uh, bio and your feed and everything, but make sure that you are showing up on social media. Um, I posted that that calendar for January. If you're like, Rachel, I don't know what to post. Um, go back to our launch pad. There's a calendar under the photos and it gives you examples of things to talk about every single day. Um, when I was a new coach, I talked a lot. I pulled a lot of inspiration from the slight edge, which is what I was reading. Um, and I was reading made to crave. Like we encourage you guys to read hundred days to brave and slight edge. Um, so, you know, personal development is going to be key in, in your content and having something to say and to share. All right. Now let's talk about, um, let's see, hold on you guys. Um, this is um, kind of the process, the stages that I would say that I take and can, did and teach and continue to take when I talk to people, when I invite people. Now, right now, like I said, I want you all, if you have not done it, to make your list of 30 to 50 people. I think you're going to be surprised at how many people you can come up with. Uh, but make a list of people that you already know, people that you can start talking to about your, your challenge group opportunity. If you haven't done it, do that tonight. Post it. Or you don't have to post the names, but tell your upline coach that you've done it and send them a picture, all right? And we'll help you start inviting those people. 
Um, the next step though, is that you are going to actually start building relationships with the people that you are following on social media and the people that you will follow on social media. Now, I am never going to, I know Shannon's never going to, Kimberly's never going to teach you to send a cold invite. What is a cold invite? That is inviting a complete stranger that you've never talked to before to join your talent group. We've all gotten that message from the makeup people or the face cream people or the, the, the hair people like, hey, you know, I know this may seem weird and awkward and it is, but I just thought I would ask you if you want to try this product, you know, you don't have to do anything. Just try it. Tell me what you think, blah, 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 right? That's weird. We don't want to be weird. We want to be relationship people, right? Because think about how personal your health and fitness journey is and how, um, just vulnerable someone has to be with you in order to talk about that, right? So I want people to trust me. I want people to know that I am somebody they can talk to, that they can confide in. One of the ways I build trust and you will build trust is by showing up on social media, by you know posting your stories, showing people that you're committed to doing this for yourself. That's going to build integrity and trust. But you're gonna start to build a relationship with people by following them, by starting to like and comment on their content or respond to their stories, right? It's very simple. Um, think about how I found you or somebody else found you. We connected on social media. I felt like, hey, this woman is like me. I'm going to start a conversation with her because she just seems like somebody I could talk to, right? And so you start the conversation, you build the relationship by going into their direct messages and just saying, hey, you know, your outfit's so cute or that dog is so cute. What kind of, what, what type of dog is it? Um, you know, and you just be real and have a conversation with people. Now I had to learn how to do this. I had to teach myself how to, to have a conversation with people, because even though I may seem like the most outgoing congenial person, like I really could sit in a bubble and just like be by myself all day. Um, but I do enjoy talking to people. I just learned, had to learn how to do it. And so you're going to build the relationship with people. And then after you talk to people for a little bit, you're going to invite them to your challenge groups. And one of the things that I do personally, you guys, is I have what is called the sorry invite. And I think I share it in the slides in just a little bit, but I'll be talking to Sally about, um, you know, her kids or homeschooling or, or the vacation they took. And then after a week or so, you know, I've built this relationship with her and I say, you know, she's watching my story. She's liking my content. I send her a message that says, Hey, sorry, I know you see what I do and I should have invited you before now, but you know, I run faith and fitness boot camps. Um, I've never asked you if you wanted to learn more. Do you have some health and fitness goals you're working on? I would love to link arms and help you get there. Just like somebody helped me. Tell me a little bit more about your goals, right? And so it's not icky. It doesn't have to be awful. It doesn't have to feel, feel really weird. Just be yourself, be genuine and talk to people and, and know that if you are being genuine in your conversation with them, you don't have to feel weird about you know, inviting them to your challenge group. So the, again, these are just some tips for ways to actually reach out to people. How do I start conversations with people? Um, you know, if I follow someone and they follow me back, I'm going to send them a message, something like this, exactly like this, actually. I send this message all the time. Hey, Suzanne, thank you so much for following my hot mess life they followed me. It's like they make eye contact with me in the grocery store, right? I'm not going to not talk to them. Um, so if somebody follows me, they're definitely getting this message to me pr from me pretty quickly. Um, and I just tell them a little bit about me. I tell them, you know, I don't think we've met quote unquote met. Um, so I just wanted to say hello. And I always ask them a question about themselves. You have to remember that as you're talking to people, as you're building relationships and you are inviting people that it's an actual person on the other end of that line of that message right it's not just a wall we're talking to it's a real person with real feelings and people are tickled to know that you took a minute to reach out and say hello to them like I have found that more than anything. I get so many responses that people say, oh my gosh, most people don't message me here on social media. They just follow me and move on. Well, hey, I'm here because I actually really and truly care about you. Yes, I'm going to invite you to a challenge group, but it's because I love what I do and I believe in it. And I want people to know that, right? So I am I'm adding followers every day and I'm sending messages to people who follow me back and I'm taking a minute to build the relationship. 
here is my sorry invite. Um, came up with this all on my own. So kind of proud of it, but it works really well for me. Um, it is just, again, that message that after I've talked to somebody for a little while about whatever it is about faith, about homeschooling, about boys, about, you know, whatever it might be. Um, and they're engaging with my content, meaning they're watching my stories. If you're watching my stories, you know, I work out, you know, I run channel scripts. Um, and so I will message people every single day, a sorry invite that says, thank you so much for following along again today. You're always so good to watch me and support me. Um, I had to reach out and say, I'm sorry. I haven't done this before because we've been friends for a minute, but would you like more information about my next boot camp? Um, I don't even know if you have specific goals, but I love this community and being able to connect with other women over faith and fitness. Would you want to learn more about my full life project boot camp? You could insert whatever name that you have for your boot camp there. It's very simple, it's very genuine, and it's not over complicated. And I get a lot of people that say no, you know, no, thanks. I'm just following you for faith. I'm just following you for inspiration. Um, you know, no thanks. I'm just I'm just here to tag along, right? And if they say that, you know what I do? I don't like just run off and never talk to them again. What I do is I say, well, thank you. That really means a lot to me. And whether you decide to join me someday or not, I'm really happy that you're part of my fit family here or my or my faith family here on social media. And I just want to keep encouraging you, right? And I'll just ask a question. And what you'll find, you guys, is that yes, you're going to get a lot of people that say no, but as so long as you stay consistent in, in showing up on social media, and getting outside your comfort zone and talking about your challenge groups and sharing your results, you're going to have people that watch you for a while. And then they're going to be like, okay, I said, I wasn't ready before I had somebody sign up yesterday who's watched me for two whole years. And she told me, she said, I've avoided this. She said, she used that word. I've avoided this for two years, but now I got to do something right. If I had just let her know two years ago, say, stop me from working my business. Like I would have missed the opportunity one, obviously to grow my business while I was doing this, sharing my story, but I would have missed the opportunity to help her sign up because the other thing is you guys, people are going to sign up with somebody. People are going to commit to a workout program. People are going to commit to a coach, another coach who is out there inviting. And so don't let the fact that you're new and it overwhelms you stop you from doing it because the more you do it, the more confident you're going to become. The more you talk to people and you have conversations, the more you're going to feel comfortable doing it again and again and again and again. All right. Um, so these are some examples. It's, it's really similar. I like the sorry invite the most, you know, it works well for me as what I mean. Um, these are some examples from another coach of some messages you can send to people who watch your stories, people that you've talked to um, about being a client or a coach. Um, if you put polls in your story, what do you say to somebody who votes on that? Um, I like this one at the bottom. If you put a response to a call to action or you put out a post and you ask people if they want more information and they say yes, then this is a really simple message that you can send. Hey, Lauren, I noticed you voted on my poll to learn more about the programs I offer and I would love to get you the information but before I do that tell me what are some of your goals you guys it's always so important to ask people that you're talking to ask them what their goals are be interested in them I tell you like I heard this on a national wake-up call and it's always worked well for my business but the most important words that you can use to grow your business are tell me about you not just Hey, this is what a challenge group is. This is what you need. This is what I'm doing. But stop yourself from doing that. And when somebody says they want more information, automatically jump into tell me about you. What are your goals? What are you wanting to achieve in the next two, three months that I can help you with? Let's just start there. And so you don't have to have all the words when somebody says they want more information. You want to get more information about them. And while you're doing that, we'll help you with what to say when it's time to sign them up. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, okay. So. Um, let me, let me stop right there. Let me stop right there for a little bit. Um, you guys ask me any questions that you have about inviting before we go into follow-ups, because if you're not inviting, then we don't even need to go into follow-ups. Right. Um, so 
Does that, does that help you with inviting, like knowing how to do it in not an icky way? And do you have some invites that you are struggling with right now or you need help sending? Because we can do it right now on this call. Anybody? Is it something that you need to be taking action on? That you will be taking action on? Yeah, yeah. Julie, you had asked a question about what to do when they want more information. Did I answer that? Yeah, me unmute, unmute yourself. Yep. I did? Yep. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. So I just want to make sure that like you guys have what you need from me before we move on. Okay. All right. Hold on. Let me fix this. Okay. Sorry, I gotta get my slides are out of order. Here we go. Okay. Let me pull this back up, share my screen, and we will keep going. Okay. So now what happens when you've talked to somebody and they, uh, you maybe you've talked to them for a little bit, you've asked their goals, you, they've told you what they are, and then they just go silent, right? Because that's going to happen. Or maybe you've messaged somebody and sent the sorry invite, or they voted in your polls and you sent them the information and nothing, like zilch complete silence, right? It totally happens. If it happens to you, it doesn't mean you're not cut out to be a coach. It means that somebody got busy or somebody doesn't really understand what you're talking about. And they're just kind of waiting to watch you a little bit longer before they say anything, right? Or maybe it's that their kid opened a message on their phone and they didn't get the notification and they have no idea that you messaged them, right? We have to remember what, how crazy our lives can be. And that the person that you're talking to, their life can be equally crazy. And it could be that somebody is just totally not interested in what you have to offer. And that's okay. It's, you just keep going. You keep going until you find that person who needs what you have to offer. And they're out there, I promise. So now when people, you do invite people and whatever the scenario is, follow-ups are important. It is very rare that I actually invite someone, get their goals, explain the challenge group, and they sign up that day. It just doesn't happen that way. We're all busy people, and it takes some time, and it takes them answering some questions, and the fortune is totally in the follow-up. And also think about, you guys, how many times did you see that commercial for the, the skinny jeans or the leggings or the new pair of shoes or whatever? Like, how many times did you see that advertisement before you actually bought it, right? So it takes people hearing about what we have to offer like seven to 10 times before they're actually ready to do anything. So that's why it's so important for you to keep talking about your workouts, to share your results from your program every week or every other week, um, to, to show you checking into your challenge group. People are watching you and studying you and figuring out what you're doing and if you're going to stick with it or not. Because if you don't stick with it, why should they stick with it? Or why should they even sign up, right? So uh, the fortune is in the follow-up. So if you need to follow up with somebody, this is something um, that I would say to people. Hey, Sarah, I haven't been able to quit thinking about helping you get started. Your desire to whatever it was, this is why it's important to know what their goals are your desire to lose 30 pounds or to look feel good in that dress at that wedding or to be able to chase your kids is so powerful I'm really ready to help you go so I sent all the information or we started talking about it do you have any questions or do you have any concerns that you want to talk about? Are you ready to get started and sign up? Okay. So that's for somebody I have talked to and we've talked about the group and they've got the information. I just straight up follow up. And one thing I like to say too is, Hey, I'm holding a spot for you this month. Are you ready to get started? Or do you still have some questions? The follow up is not annoying. You don't have to, don't think of it as being annoying. Um, now, if you follow up a few times and you don't ever hear from them, just let it go for a while. While, okay. Uh, but the follow up is really an opportunity to create clarity, to open the door for them to say, Hey, yeah, I saw the $160. That's a lot for us right now. Or to say, Okay, I don't even know how do I stream these workouts, right? Um, or to say, What equipment do I need? People often have questions, or maybe they didn't even read the email and they just need some clarification. So look at the follow up as a way one, to show that you truly, genuinely want to help them. Two, it's a way to open the door for questions. And two, three, um, it is, it's, it's a, you're closing the sale, right? You're closing the sale. If you invite, 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 and talk to people, but you never follow up, you're never going to have a sale. 
So, um, you know, just think about, again, how sensitive this might be for somebody considering committing to something that they failed at so many times before and just be their cheerleader, be their, that person who believes in them. Hey, you can do this. If you have any fears or concerns, let's talk it out. I've been where you are, you know, and I really want to help you get started. Um, so the follow-up is really important and you're going to have people that say no, like you're going to have people that say no, it's just part of the business. People tell me no every Every single day, but your goal is three people this month. And the general rule of thumb is that for every uh, 10 people that you invite, one person is going to sign up and commit to a challenge pack. So that means you have to invite at least 30 people a month to hit success club. If you want to increase your odds, double it, triple it, right? That's inviting three people a day. You can do that. Um, so, but you do have to be following up with people and helping understand what their questions are. Again, um, these are just some examples uh, that you can send to people maybe that need more information, ones that are just totally ghosting you. It's okay. People do that. I know I've done it to people before. Um, I think I ghosted my coach before I, follow, before I finally signed up as a coach with her. Um, so just remember where you've been before and how you wanted people to, to ask you and respond to you. So I'll post these slides in our thing too, so you can look at them and go back to them. Um, so the big thing is that if you're not inviting you guys, I talked about the front door of your business. This is really the back door of your business. Um, and so the front door is your social media store feed, your stories, your posts, your bio. Um, this is the back door of your business. And 80% of your time in your business every single day, whether it's an hour or two hours a day, should be spent in your inbox, okay? Okay. I teach you guys, I teach my team, if you don't wake up every single day with a message in your inbox, then you didn't do your job yesterday, okay? I don't care if it's one response from an invite you sent. I don't care if it's one connection message. I don't care if it's one follow-up. Hopefully it's more because you should be connecting, inviting, and following up with at least a few people every single day. So I just told myself about two years into my own business where I noticed I was hitting a slump and a lull in my business. And I realized I wasn't getting into people's inboxes. I was relying on my social media feeds to get my challengers. And you can't do that. You have to be talking to people in their inboxes. So and that's just something I encourage you as you grow your business every single day, when you wake up, look at your, not first, get into your word, wait to open your, your, your Facebook or messenger or whatever it is, do your quiet time first and pray over it. But every single day, if you did the work yesterday, you'll have messages in your inbox today. Okay. And they may be all no's and that's okay. That's totally okay. The no's mean that you did something that you took action and that you are learning how to handle objections and you are talking to people and showing them what you have to offer. All right. Um, and again, remember the faith and the enthusiasm and the action. People are going to get excited about what you get excited about. I can guarantee you that myself or Shannon or Kimberly or whoever invited you here, um, they were probably excited about what they were doing. They probably messaged you and they couldn't wait to help you get started as a challenger or a coach. You know, take that same enthusiasm, borrow our enthusiasm if you don't have it yet, and know that there are people that will get excited about what you get excited about. Um, I'm not going to talk about coaching right now. Um, we'll get into that later, but the same thing applies to inviting people to coaching. If you have friends who would make great coaches, I mean, don't be shy about talking to them. You know, if you already love the community, if you already love the personal development, if you already made $50 and you're like, wow, I mean, I just made $50 because I helped somebody start their fitness journey. That's amazing, right? Tell people about that. Get excited about that. We can train people um, just like we're training you together. All right. And so um, this is one thing I love this scripture verse that I want to leave you with before I answer your questions, before we answer your questions, um, is that your business is not going to look like somebody else's business. 
Um, the way, the things that you get passionate about and excited about in this business are not going to be the same as somebody sitting next to you. And it's supposed to be that way. Um, you're supposed to be different. You're supposed to look different. You're going to love different trainers. You're going to love different, um, you're going to love different moves. You're going to love different flavors of Shakeology. You're going to love different things about this business, but you're never going to love it unless you do it right? The love doesn't come first. I didn't love sending invites as a new coach. I didn't love posting on social media. I love it now. Like I love it now. Uh, but it took me doing it and, and getting more confident in it and asking questions and trying it a different way uh, before I actually loved it. And so that's our goal for you. That's our prayer for you guys is that you will do this, that you'll do it scared, that you'll be the girls who are willing to get uncomfortable I keep calling you girls, ladies, um, that will get uncomfortable and that you will learn to love it because just of everything that it does for the other person, for you, for your team, um, and that you will see it grow. You like being called a girl. You're so funny, Suzanne. You are a girl. Um, so that's what I have as far as inviting. So now I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to ask me questions. Um, and then I'm going to give you guys the challenge to, to make the list, make the list of people. If you haven't already, Lindsay, I know you've already done it. Um, add more people to your list. If you've already made the list, add more people to your list. Um, you know, Lindsay made her list of 30 people and she was like, do I invite them all now? Or do I invite like three people a day? I was like you can have your list and work from it for the next two weeks. That's great. Right. Three people a day. Um, so that's your challenge for tonight is to make your list, text your upline when you have it done and your upline is going to help you with those conversations. All right. Um, so what questions do you guys have for us about anything? It doesn't just have to be inviting and follow-ups. It can be posting and whatever. Anything? Shan, do you want to add to any of that? I think I would just say that um, as you plant the seed and the invite, it doesn't just, it may be a little discouraging at first and that's okay. You're just learning and it's just a process to think that sometimes we send invites and expect, you know, at least our, an acknowledgement, but just a reminder that you're challenging people to sort of help journey. And sometimes that takes a little bit of thought and a little bit of cultivation and someone's kid might've screamed in the background and they went to the thought pause to reply to your message, but got taken away. So that's why the follow-up is really important. And you're just being a leader by constantly checking in. So don't ever feel like you're being annoying. You're being purposeful and you're caring about the person that you're reaching out to. Thousand percent. I agree. All right. Are you guys good? I think my question is like, I post stuff but then I don't know what I'm supposed to do with like what people answer. Like I posted the other day of like, I can't remember what the question was. Oh, do you want a maid? I, uh, I can't remember. Like do you want eight hours of sleep? That kind of stuff. But then I don't know what to do with like all these people commenting. And I'm like, I don't know what to do with these people now. Cause it oh wasn't gosh. about fitness. But that's a great problem to have. Honestly, that's a really good, <laughs> that's a really good problem to have because, you know, obviously if we just post fitness, like people are going to get bored of us with us um, or they're, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, they may not, I don't, but it's really cool to connect with people. I connect with people every single day, like today in my stories, let me use this example. Today in my stories tonight, I posted that we subscribe to the Discovery Plus right? And I said, have you done it yet? Um, and people will vote. They are voting yes or no or whatever. So what am I going to do with that? What does that have to do with fitness? Nothing, right? But it has to do with me and who I am. And it's about my family. And if people engage with that poll, then I know they're like me, which is really good, really important. And so everybody that votes in that poll, I'm going to send them a message depending on how they voted. Um, and this is really good for Instagram algorithm too. I won't go into all that, but responding to people who like comment and vote in your polls, it helps your Instagram grow. Um, but so everybody that votes in that poll, they're going to get a message for me and I'm going to be like, ah, I'm such a Chip and Joanna fan. Are you? That's all I'm going to say. 
That's all I'm going to say. It's not going to be like, hey, do you want to join my challenge group? It's going to be a relationship building opportunity. And so the thing, Lindsay and everybody, when you're when you're in people's inboxes, do you know what Instagram says? Or if they're commenting on your stuff and liking it and watching your stories and you're in their inbox, Instagram says, whoa, these people know each other. I'm going to put Lindsay's content into Sally's feed more than I was before. That's where the consistency and talking about your challenge groups and sharing your workouts and making one or two call to action posts a week is going to pay off because Sally's going to be like, hmm. Lindsay's doing this thing and she's working out every day and she's getting up early and she's drinking the shake and she's getting these results and her kids are working out with her now. Gosh, I want that. Like, I want that. Right. And so after a week or two, if Sally's like watching every workout story that you do, you're going to be like, Hey, sorry, hadn't asked you this yet, but you see, I'm working out and you're going to be advertising your challenge groups. Right. And I've run these boot camps for women who want to incorporate faith into their fitness and really get serious about taking some action this year. Um, I'm sorry I haven't invited you yet, but do you have some health and fitness goals for yourself? Like, tell me more. I would love to link arms with you, right? So do you see how you took like a, a, an engagement opportunity with the, what was it you said? What'd you ask about? Random questions. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Random questions are fantastic. Like I try to do one every single day um, just for the opportunity to talk to people. Um, so yeah, just send a message from based on what your question was and end it with a question. So like I said, you know, they voted about Discovery Plus. I'm not just going to be like, oh, yeah, you got it. Or, oh, you don't have it. You should get it. I'm going to end it with a question. Um, Love Chip and Joanna. That's why we subscribe to it. Do you watch their shows? End it with a question. So they'll respond back and it creates a relationship. That makes sense? Yep. This is the fun part for me. Like that's the fun part for me. I love getting creative. What am I gonna ask people about? And how can I connect with somebody in a different way today? Cause that builds trust and it builds a relationship. And it's not just me being like, oh, I do health and fitness. You wanna do it with me? Right. Um, okay. So that's a good question. I love that question. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Any more questions? Okay. So you're Amanda, were you going to ask something? So Shannon was talking to me about, um, finding pockets of time. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know it doesn't quite have anything to do with inviting, but no, good. I am struggling with, like you were saying in the very beginning of our call, um, you know, going to get your boys from school, having your commute, having to come home and cook mm -hmm. dinner and everything. So I'm struggling to find my, my pockets of time in my day to, um, to post my stories and, and I'm, I, and I'm not used to like taking pictures of like yeah. what I'm doing all day long. Um, or I forget. And then like the day is over and I'm like, Oh man, I, I did this today and I did this today and I didn't, yeah. I didn't document any of it. Um, so I, those are some of my areas that I'm struggling with. Cause I want to be I want to be, you know, posting every day so that I can be inviting and I can be consistent. Um, but that's where I'm in yeah. trouble. So we will definitely talk about this more next week on the social media call. And I'm glad you asked tonight. I'm not putting you off. Um, one of the things we will teach you, you don't have to post in real time. Okay. Your stories are more kind of like, Shannon's really good. She'll pull over on the side of the road and talk to the thing if she gets inspired, <laughs> right? Her kids can be in the back of the car and people love it. Like people love it. Me, I'm like, oh my gosh, what are my kids going to say? I probably overthink it. Um, but, you know, stories are your chance to be just real in the moment. You're at Kroger, you snap a picture of your grocery cart, boom, that's my grocery haul. Or, you know, my kid said something funny. Or, you know, like I, I used to, like I said, I had an hour commute. So I would listen to my personal development. That was where I got that piece of, um, of my day in, um, you know, if I was listening to my personal development, I could pull over on the side of the road and be like, listen to what I just said, heard. And I could cut people up, you know, in a talk like that. But as far as content, like your posts, Amanda, 
what you're going to do because your day is so crazy is like, and I've done this before a lot, many weekends in my business, you're going to change your outfit a couple of times on Saturday or Sunday. And you're going to be like, Hey babe, take a picture of me. Or you're going to prop up your phone and take some pictures or have your kids do it or whatever. Um, and that's going to be content that you can use, um, throughout the next couple of weeks. You know, if you take a picture of a meal today, you don't have to post it today. You can snap a picture and post it on next Tuesday if you want to, right? So just remember that, like you don't have to be all, and we don't want you honestly posting in the moment every time because it can be a time suck and it can take you away from your family. So you're just going to start to maybe plan out some posts and you don't have to post every day. We want you to post once a day just to get in the habit and to be more confident. But yeah, so I don't know, I'm sure Shannon has something to add to that because she's good at that. And even, I mean, with your stories, like for example, I just posted what I ate for lunch today now because I got, I was at a business meeting and I snuck a picture of it, but like I said, today I had this for lunch so that I could have a little bit of my mom's lasagna because my mom's in town. I posted a picture of her with my kids that I took last night, but the, the status is still the same. She's here visiting and I'm sharing that, you know what I mean? So sometimes you can collect pictures for ideas and share at the end of the day or, you know, memories from the weekend or just something that even though it isn't totally real time, you're still collecting memories throughout your day and, and you're not sucking away just like you would take pictures anyway. Um, there's a way if you need to have, you know, a breather or a, a part of your day where you're, you know, you want to be unplugged for, for a while. You can still um, upload them in, at the end of the day, like, or, you know, at a, on a, even a different day, like she said, food. But you mentioned stories and social media, but are you talking about also the vitals, like inviting and, you know, finding the time? Because um, I have a document that I'll send you that's a schedule of your day and how just an example of when you could plug in, like, uh, whenever I'm with my bosses, they like to sit around the coffee pot in the morning and, like, it drives me crazy for fun activity because that's like our planning meeting but it's really slow and really drawn out and like that's when I add new people because they're reading like the paper or talking about an article we need to take action on and I'm listening but I'm also adding new people and like able to check that off and I know as a teacher or you know a lot of people have different positions um here on the call but there's there's often time where you don't see it so we will work with you on that especially next week when we talk about social media too um and talk about your schedule and look at your day and we can find find some pockets and yeah. you know like she said like I don't post in my stories on Sunday usually but on Monday I'll be like here's what we did yesterday right and maybe like we went hiking so I post some pictures of the boys hiking so you know and that's even think about it this way too Amanda you can show people that, hey, I can build a business, but not be glued to my phone all the time. And like, that might even be like your thing. Like, this is how I'm stewarding my time and my family and my business well. Um, you know, I ate this meal yesterday, but I didn't want to post it while I was with my family at the dinner table, right? And you will become the girl in the break room who's taking pictures of things. I mean, like you just are, like, that's just who you're going to be. <laughs> I mean, and it's okay. Uh, people are going to, people are going to love what you share. So definitely, definitely like, and on that, on your tracker, you have your business activity tracker. Um, it has the time, I don't have mine in front on my desk, but it has the little time things beside it. So like start to challenge yourself. Okay. I can, I can pull over on the side of the road and I can actually connect with people for 10 minutes before I pick up my daughter or, you know, I, while, while my, uh, while it's my planning period or while I'm eating my lunch or whatever, you have a break, you know, I can, you know, get in my inbox for 10 minutes. Um, before I go to bed, I can plan my, a post for tomorrow, you know, check into my challenge group and set a timer and stick to it. And it's not gonna be perfect. And you may not get as much done in that time period, but you're going to get more confident and more efficient in the work as you go. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Very good question. And you know, not every day you're not gonna get all the things done. Just plain and simple. You're not gonna get it all done every day, but you're gonna get better at it and eventually you will. And you'll be one hour clubbing it with us. Yeah, every every day that you log something is like a positive experience that will compound to make everything easier. I mean, it never gets like completely easy to fit it all in, right? Like I still have to do some stuff when we get off this call that I would have 
paid money at the beginning of the day, I would have had done already. Right. But things just happen, you know, stuff with stuff at work, stuff with your kids, stuff with your family. So um, that's the great thing about what we do is you can fit it in. You can double up tomorrow if you need to not invite tonight, you know, um, and, and you can schedule your time and how you do this work, you know, in a way that works for you. You know, and hey, you guys, like, I would love, Shane and I would both love for you guys to use our pod. Like, you know, say, hey, hold me to it. I'm going to send five invites right now. You know, like, I mean, that's that's accountability and that's what we're there for. Um, and if, when you level up, other people level up, you know. So don't be afraid to, like, just pop, pop in there and be like, okay, I'm sitting on the toilet. I'm following 20 people. I mean, mm. uh, like, maybe not. But um, just, just, whoa we're there with you and what y'all do, it makes me want to do it too, you know, honestly. So yeah. you're not getting rut. So, you know, it, it's fun to watch you guys go. I love it when y'all message us and or message us individually, either way. It's fun. It's fun to see you grow and help you grow. Okay. The last question is everybody have a personal development that they're listening or reading to reading right now, because it makes this a whole lot easier. <laughs> so make sure to have one, the slight edge or the compound effect is probably one of the better ones to start out with to make you ready to, to run through a wall in the best way. Coming in the mail. Good. Oh, good. good. And it's um, giving you tons of content, honestly. Yeah. It'll get you inspired and kind of, whoa, kind of, um, lift you out of a, if you're in kind of like an overwhelmed or maybe just like a low energy state, it'll just pick you up. Same thing with national wake up call. I listened to one, the one yesterday convinced that I was not going to be into it. And of course, like after I listened to it, I literally could just like invite anyone that walked on the street. Yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. No, I never miss the national wake up call. Just that always lights my fire. I remember as a new coach, I would listen. I would be like, no, I'm supposed to listen to this. I really don't want to coach. I'm going to quit. And I would listen to that call and I'd be like, boom, you know, she can do it. I can do it. So, yeah. Um, if you go to podcasts, like on your regular podcast app, however you listen, it's um, just put Team Beach Buddy Coach Podcast. And it's the same as the wake up calls that are loaded there. And um, in the beginning, there's announcements that'll help you in your, in your business and just know what's coming down the pipe with new programs and trips and things like that. And then there's usually recognition. So you'll hear all the coaches who are winning and doing great things and it motivates you to take action. And then they always feature a coach that's doing really well, usually either a top coach right now. Right now they'll probably go through the top 10, right? They just had more. And I feel like they usually kind of hop around or something. Yeah, they alternate. They've been doing a really good job of taking newer coaches who are seeing success and sprinkling those in with coaches who are more established so it's a good yeah. move. but everybody always goes back and they tell the start of their story and that's what's powerful to me because everybody right. starts the same in this business right where you are and that just yeah. like that blows my mind yeah yep okay well thanks for getting on tonight y'all yeah I wish I'd taken a picture before the other girls had to hop off but can I, I want to take a picture I'm gonna tag you and this is a business building activity you can share it whenever I tag you okay or Shannon I don't know if I have everybody all right are you guys ready Suzanne you there okay one two three everybody smile okay I got it I'll put it in our pod and you can share it or I'll tag you if I know you I know you all think all right you guys let me say a prayer for you before we go and then we'll just go do our things that you were challenged with and if you have questions you know where to find us um God, thank you for this time. Um, God, I just thank you for reminding me of what it was like to be a brand new coach and being able to share that and encourage them with my story. God, um, each of these women is a leader already. You have called them to lead, uh, whether it's just through their social media right now, it's a challenge group and eventually a team. God, um, just implant in them that that you have called them to lead in some way by sharing their story. Um, God, I pray that you would give them courage and make them bold and, and God, make them excited about doing this. Help them to love the, the uh, putting their story into words and, and doing the random polls and connecting with new people and knowing that, that each and every person that's on the other end of that message is somebody that 
that you have put in their path to to encourage to to minister to to link arms with God just help them to know there's purpose in this business and each and everything that we do and help us to be consistent in doing the work God and I pray that you would bless the work um and God just thank you so much for the opportunity to lead and I pray that you would help me to lead well and Shannon to lead well God and um just again thank you so much for what we get to do in your precious name amen all right bye you guys see ya